Dr. Bassem Naim, good evening. Good evening. Thank you very much. How did it help your cause to send thousands of your fighters over the border into Israel to murder, terrorize and kidnap Israeli civilians? Uh, I think uh, the story didn't start on, the, on October 7th. We have to remember that Gaza, in particular, is under suffocating siege now for more than 17 years. A whole generation is, is under uh, a daily killing by poverty and sickness, uh, 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 which has converted the whole Gaza Strip into the biggest open-air prison, and Israelis have dealt with us as an animal farm. I have to remember you that uh, the chief uh, commander of Al Qassam Brigade, who uh, initiated, who announced the operation, he was clear, uh, gave clear instructions not to uh, not to target civilians or not to uh, harm civilians. And if it has to be done, you, they have to deal with them in a very high moral way. But I have to remember that all these military compounds are around the Gaza Strip are these the same compounds. <clears throat> where military people, our soldiers and officers and civilians are living who are suffocating right, the I'll, Gaza I'll, Strip. I'll just, I'll, just I'll just stop you there because we need to come back and establish some, some basic shared facts. It was clearly part of the plan of those fighters who crossed the border to murder, terrorise and kidnap. They were not operating on their own volition. So let me ask you again, how did it help the Palestinian cause and the Palestinian people to carry out those savage and horrific acts. The Palestinian cause again started 75 years ago and we have we have always called for freedom, dignity and independent state, a sovereign state. We have offered a peace, uh, a hand of peace 30 years ago by signing the Oslo agreement to achieve the minimum of our genuine rights of a basic of an independent Palestinian state. I mean they have crushed us, squeezed us in the corner and given us only one of two choices either to be killed by a rocket or to be killed by uh, poverty and unemployment. Therefore, we have decided to be to die in, in dignity and to, it was a pure act of defense. We are occupied people. We are defending our existence, our regional rights. How, how is it an act of defense to murder babies? <clears throat> no. First of all, I hope that we, we don't continue to adopt the Israeli narratives to, to talk about uh, uh, killing babies. Well, but I, I'm just I going to... to I'm sorry, Doctor, I'm sorry, law, Dr. Naeem. Let, let's just agree <clears throat> on a few basic facts, because the only way that you and I can have any kind of conversation is if we agree on a few basic facts. You're an educated man. You were trained in Germany. You're a doctor. I assume you know how to distinguish between facts and propaganda. Yes. Do you truly believe what you're saying yes, yes. when you say... Yes. That the killing I, I, of infants okay, me... in Israel that has been documented by journalists okay. from the BBC to Al Jazeera, by the United Nations, by Amnesty International. Do you truly believe what you're saying when you say those okay. acts did not take place? It is very smart to reach this point. Therefore, I hope you give me enough time to explain our point of view. I can I understand what's said all the whole the whole week in the media and at the international level. But I have also the right to defend my position. First of all, we are occupied people. We have the right, based on international law, to react, to resist our occupiers, which but is you in know, this case you the know Israelis. Perfectly well, as an, you know perfectly well as an educated man. Resistance. You know perfectly well as an educated man that international law does not allow you to murder civilians, to murder babies, yes, yes, to take I elderly know. people. I know and young people hostage. Yes, I know that, and we are committed to the international humanitarian law, but again, I have to remember you that all these basic military compounds around Gaza Strip, where most of them are soldiers and officers who are killing our children and women and the elderly every day, and within one week, we are talking about 3,000 Palestinians 60% of them are women and children killed by Israeli killings machine. That the, we are occupied, we are defending our position, our country. Therefore, it is an act of defense. Okay, in the middle of the confrontation, there was some civilians. The clear instruction was not to kill civilians, but I can give you and I send you a lot of videos, uh, including Israeli uh, media uh, outlets who are talking about 
Israelis, civilians killed by Israelis. And the last one was two days ago when the Israelis thought that this is a Palestinian man and he has been killed in one of these kibbutzes around Gaza Strip. Therefore, okay, I agree there was okay, there was civilians who was killed, but you cannot talk about civilians who are in because these military combats were inside the kibbutz or settlements. Well. Uh that's not the case. And there are, as I said before, there are a very large number of international journalists and organisations who have been to the kibbutz where those massacres took place, who testify to the murders and to the burning of individuals after those attacks. But let's move on. I want to talk about the hostages because we're in a, uh, a, it's a difficult to understand what Hamas is doing with the hostages right now. So one day it's threatening to kill them. The next day, it releases videos purporting to show that they are caring for them, bearing in mind that some of these hostages, women and children, were the survivors of massacres. Let's get one thing understood between us. Do you accept that taking civilian hostages is a war crime? Again, this has been clarified yesterday by the spokesman of al Hassan Brigade. We haven't planned at any moment to take any civilian hostages as uh, and civilians as hostages, the plan was to to take or to fight against soldiers and to take some soldiers as uh, hostages because we have more than 5,800 prisoners now for decades in the Israeli jails. So, but accidentally, they are found in the. Uh, so, sorry, let me let me continue. They found in the field, and yesterday they have announced it clearly. At the moment, we have the security facility. I mean. The aggression is stopped. We are ready to release them all, uh, including the foreigners. So you're going to release all the hostages, but in the meantime, you're now making an argument for the first time, as I understand it, that Hamas lost control of its fighters, that they were not operating under no, the orders of the Hamas leadership. Is that what you're saying? No, I, I didn't say that. I, what I say, yes, it is. Uh, look. At the moment, the, the, the whole siege fall down. There are other uh, Palestinian groups who uh, became part of the uh, operation. Even simple, ordinary people, when the, the, sea, the, the prison around Gaza Strip was broken and the siege was open, a lot of even normal, normal ordinary people came into, into the other side. It, has, it doesn't mean that, it is, that we lost control, but again, it was... Uh, after a few minutes or maybe one, two hours, it was, it was a chaos in the area. Again, we have uh, uh, announced clearly that we are caring for them based on our uh, uh, moral obligations, but at the moment, the aggression is stopped. We are ready to release all of them, including all foreigners. You are now saying it is the position of the Hamas leadership that it was not their intention to slaughter civilians, that the situation got out of control. That was not their intention. Is that your argument? It is 100% our plan to fight against uh, armed uh, soldiers, not to harm civilians, not to take them as captured. Therefore, I, we have uh, distributed a lot of videos where even civilians on the way to Gaza, they have, when they have discovered that they are civilians, they send them back or they help them to, care, to go back to, uh, uh, to, to the other side. Therefore, this was not a plan, not only, I'm sorry to say it, it, it is not a proper word to say slaughter, but I, we, we, were not, we were not planning even to harm them or to, uh, or to attack them at all. Um why do you use the position that you hold to tell civilians in northern Gaza, families and children, not to seek safety in the south, but to stay behind in Gaza, in northern Gaza? Tara, I, Tara I'm sorry. Do you believe such... Sorry, it is not you, but do you believe such idiot argument or idiot propaganda? Look, it is impossible. It is impossible to move from south, from north to south, or from south well, to north. A hundred, one hundreds of thousands of, of Gazans. Group, sorry. 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 Hundreds, one, of thousands, one, one. Yes, yes. hundreds of thousands of Gazans yes. have heard the warning and have left the north to the south. However, Hamas and you personally yes. issued, okay. issued instructions to the people of Gaza to remain in northern Gaza, where, where they will be, well, they will be at great, in great danger. Sarah, let me clarify this in very short, in few words. They have, we are calling all our people to stay at home because it is very dangerous and very serious. One of these convoys 
moving from the north to the south, was attacked by the Israelis three days ago, and they have killed in one shot 70 Palestinians, including our friends, some doctors, and wounded 200. In the last three days, there were three, four massacres in, in Rafah, in Khan Yunus, in, in the middle zone, which is in the south. Third, there is no area to be received as refugees, no possibility to, to accommodate these people because UNRWA, ICRT, and all international organizations have said we cannot receive anyone because we don't have the facility and we can't see. We cannot secure anyone. I want to ask you a final question. Israel's response to your uh, savage attack in Israel was predictable. Why does Hamas, why do you want more civilians, more people <coughs> in Gaza to die? Israel, Israel didn't respond to our uh, act of defense. Israel, this is the Israeli policy. I can tell you that one week before, eight, seven, eight children killed near the borders. We have a continuous massacre, 250 Palestinians killed during the last few months in, in, in the West Bank on Israeli checkpoints. Massacres in 2008, 2012, 2014, 2021, during Great March of Return, thousands and thousands of people are killed during Israel. This is the, again, they have given us one of two choices, either to leave or to be killed. And we have chosen to be, to die in dignity or to live in dignity. Dr. Basim Nahim, that's all we've got time for. Thank you. Please, thank you very much.